in this episode of the Venus Cuckoldress podcast. Today, I sit down with my friend, the Confident Cuck, to answer a listener question. I was just curious. So I've heard the word uh, being a cuck, but I've also heard the word of being a stag. And I was wondering if you could explain the difference between being a stag and a cuck, or are they the same thing? I think every stag is a cuck, to answer the question a little bit more simply. Wait, what did he just say? If you like seeing your woman, you know, get fucked by another man, like, you're, you're a cuck. And that's awesome, and it's great, and we should all, like, unify under that, because that's a term that everybody uses. And that's the one that we really have to stop the stigma with. The, it, it seems like the, the stags tend to be very... Um, Either they, they really don't want anybody to associate the negative stigma or they want everybody to know that, hey, they still have sex with their woman. Um, they still like have manly fetishes, but um, but they still like will go down and clean up their woman after cream pie and stuff. So there's not really an exact, you know, science to what it is. Yeah. Um, but there, there seems to be that they don't want the, the humiliation side of it to be too important. think that stags feel cuck angst or do they not feel cuck angst at all? Is it literally just compersion? It seems like it's very much that they just don't want the, the negative label of the cuck there. But they definitely, when I talk to them about what they feel like with their partners and, and the feelings that they have, it's 100% cuck angst. Um, so that, that's what we can say that, yeah, all, all these things are definitely tough. Like, we're all going through the same thing, and we're all going through <laughs> Very interesting. Welcome to the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, the passionate, and the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Make sure you go to venuscuckoldress.com to subscribe to the podcast and check out the Venus blog. And of course, if you love it, share it. Now, sit back, make yourself comfortable, and enjoy the show with your host, Venus. Welcome to this episode of the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast. I am your host, Venus. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's a pretty exciting episode for me because I have someone who's going to be joining me. It's my friend. We've been friends for a little while now. He goes by Confident Cuck, and he writes a blog all about the male perspective of cuckolding. And not just that, but his motto is building positivity and confidence for those passionate about a healthy cuckold lifestyle. I would definitely recommend you check out his blog. It's very, very interesting. It's confidentcuck.wordpress.com. You can also find him on Twitter at confidentcuck. I'll be getting into the listener question that sparked this fantastic conversation that I had today with Confident Cuck. But first, I wanted to mention a couple of things. So the next Pillow Talk that's going to be done on Livecast is January the 30th. It's a Saturday, and it'll be at 7 p.m. Pacific time. If you'd like to go to venuscuckoldress.com, click on the link Pillow Talk, and you can go ahead and register there. It's so much fun. There's going to be a few ladies that'll be joining me for a few hours of fun, casual question and answer format kind of hanging out. So I invite all of you to come and join on January 30th for the next Pillow Talk. Also, I want to mention that all of my Patreon supporters are now receiving weekly mini episodes just for them. So if you love this podcast and you would like to support it, please go to patreon.com forward slash Venus Cuckoldress to sign up to support this podcast and allow me to continue doing what I love, but also to get all the wonderful perks that come along with being a supporter. And one of those is weekly exclusive mini episodes every single Wednesday. So I hope you're enjoying those and you can look forward to them every single week. 
And lastly, here's a little message from my friend Nookie over at datingkinky.com. Are you in the market for kinky and not quite vanilla people to connect with, date, or even just enjoy some adult fun? Maybe you're looking for the chance to learn from experts on relationships, sex, and kink education topics. Hi, I'm Nookie Notes, and if you answered yes to those questions, I invite you to check out my site, Dating Kinky. At Dating Kinky, we provide a -a one-of-a-kind dating site experience. You'll find an education hub with live and on-demand classes and workshops, books, and more, and an interactive community where people from around the world can meet and engage. And coming up on the horizon, look for the premiere of our Dating Kinky app, due to be released in February 2021. For more details, come check out our website at datingkinky.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at Dating Kinky and on Instagram at Dating Kinky Official. I look forward to meeting you. Thanks, and have a kinky day. All right, so let's get started. I received this following question from a listener, and afterwards, we're, I'm just going to dive right in with my friend Confident Cuck to try to answer it. Here it is. Hey, so uh, I was just curious. So I've heard the word uh, being a cuck, but I've also heard the word of being a stag. And I was wondering if you could explain the difference between being a stag and a cuck, or are they the same thing? Uh, or, and if not, what's the difference in them? Because I'm just curious, and I'm trying to find out for myself. Thank you. Okay, so uh, yeah, I got this question from um, a listener who wanted to know the difference between a cuck and a stag. And I was like, you know what, I can answer this to the best of my ability no problem. And I have on, I think it was like the first or second episode of the podcast, but I'm like, you know what? I should probably get a guy's point of view (laughs) on this. (laughs) So I thought, you know what? I'll give you a call. I'll see what your thoughts are on that. Um, By the way, I love your blog. It's so awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's, it's great. Um, And you have a lot of, of posts on there. A lot of really good posts. You do have one on there about the cuck spectrum. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's actually my most popular post on there, too. Um, really? From Stag to Sissy. The, yep. Yeah, that one. That It seems like uh, uh, it seems like uh, uh, our listener isn't the only one who, uh, who has yeah. this question. It seems like it's a very popular question. Yeah. Yeah. I get, and I can understand that when people are, you know, learning about cuckolding, there's these new terms and stuff like that. And then there's just so much variation within it and trying to figure (laughs) out, okay, what is what? And so I can understand why that blog post was pretty popular. So um, first I wanted to ask you a little bit about your blog. So I, I love the fact that you've come out with this blog confident cuck. And I love the fact that you are trying to build positivity around cuckolding. So, um, and also to build confidence for men within this lifestyle. I think that's totally key. So what was it that inspired you to do this blog? Um, well, a lot of it was, um, the Venus Cuckolders podcast, to be honest, um, hearing you talk about it from, uh, a female's perspective and hearing how much you valued it um, definitely made me feel, uh, uh, and this was like years ago when you started the blog too, um, just uh, it definitely made me feel very valuable in this and that it wasn't something to be ashamed of as like society kind of pushes out there. Um, so as I started to deal with that myself and kind of grow into that, I've always been very into writing and, and storytelling. Um, I think that, you know, grand narratives are, are very influential on people and stuff. And I started to realize how much I enjoyed this and how empowering it felt for me to really embrace this side of myself rather than um, trying to hide it. So then I was like, you know what, I'm sure uh, I, I have to get this stuff out and I'm sure there's other people that would be interested in this. And uh, I don't know how many <laughs> how uh, uh, how many people I already um, have a pretty sizable amount of people that are interested. So it was very overwhelming and the positive community that, you know, is on Twitter with like the people that write about this. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it just inspired me to to go more and more. Um, I have been a little bit uh, not active on it just uh, with 2020 as 2020 <laughs> happened. Um, but I do plan uh, uh, this um, to, to be getting more into that, maybe even putting it into podcast form um, as well to, to go on to it. Because I think it's, I think the, the stigma that if you are a cuckold and it somehow devalues you is 
very problematic and it causes a lot of it causes a lot of psychological stress and um, internal anxiety. So I feel like if you can fight that, then you can be a better person. You can be a better lover to your partner. Um, you can be a better cuckold, and you can you know serve your cuckold just better, and your relationship can just be stronger, and you can um, yeah just be better for that. So yes. yeah, so that's what I would say. Yeah, kind inspired of like that. kind of like being proud of being a cuck and mm-hmm. sort of letting go of that shame that comes along with the stigma that's out mm-hmm. there. Would you agree with that? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Um, and I've realized I've like, even people in my personal life from friends and family, um, that I'm close enough with, I've like discussed this and we've spoken about it and there really isn't the negative stigma. They're not, you know, looking to the people that really care about me and that I really care about. They're very supportive and we talk about it and it's just, Oh, Hey, you're into that. Okay, cool. Well, I'm into this other thing. Um, you know, and it's, uh, and I've been, <laughs> I've been surprised there's a few people who are into it as well that I know. <laughs> um, so it was interesting seeing that. But yeah, there is a, most people don't really care what you do behind the bedroom. And um, if you're just honest and open and proud about it yourself, then that takes away a lot of the shame because a lot of it's really just in your own head. A lot of times when you're thinking, Oh, this is such a bad thing. It's most of it's in your head or it's people that you shouldn't really value anyway, because they're judging you based on superficial things. Yeah. I would totally agree with you on that. I feel like, and I've thought a lot about this before I'm like, okay, So a lot of guys have this real cuck fear of anybody finding out because of the shame, because of the stigma. And I wonder in my mind, okay, how real is that? Like, I understand the fear is real, but the rational behavior behind it, I'm like, "Mm, I don't know. I kind of feel like if you were, if somebody was to find out, it wouldn't actually be the end of the world. (laughs) And a lot of, I pissed off a lot of guys when I wrote about this on my blog, because they (laughs) vehemently argued that and said, no, I would lose my family. I would lose my friends. I would lose my job. It would be the end of the world. I'm like, okay, well, I get that fear, but I don't really know if that would be the case. So I'm glad that you brought that up. (laughs) Yeah. From my experience, that's not, um, the, the only rationale that I have for that is that there are people that are in very conservative areas, especially, um, you know, in like the South of America where I happen to be from. So, yeah, down here in the States, there, uh, uh, there's definitely, you know, those conservative people. But I would argue that, um, you know, if you let their values control your life, you're not going to be happy anyway. So so do what you want to do. You know, if they if they want to shame you for eating pork or, you know, having a drink or, you know, sharing your wife with a, you know, big, strong, hung black man, then you don't need them in your life. <laughs> um, you know, or you don't need to tell them to, you know, not everybody needs to know all your business. So, well, you yeah, know, you but, don't, yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. It's not like you're going out there and advertising it to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's it's maybe not going to be the end of the world if somebody actually does find out. Anyway, that's a whole nother episode. Um, <laughs> but to get back to the the question that we had, I wanted to ask you first. So how come you identify as a cuckold rather than a stag? So I think that there's two parts to this. Um, I think that the... Uh, that cuck is kind of an umbrella term. Like people use that term all the time and that's the most popular term. So that's kind of an umbrella term for everybody on the spectrum. Um, and the way that I define the spectrum was uh, from like least manly to most manly would be sissy, beta, um, cuck, and then um, stag would be the most one. So I think that that's, uh, I think every stag is a cuck to answer <laughs> the question a little bit more simply. Um, uh, you know, that, that's just what it, I mean, if you like seeing your woman you know, get fucked by another man, like you're, you're a cuck and that's awesome. And it's great. And we should all like unify under that because that's a term that everybody uses. And that's the one that we really have to stop the stigma with. Yeah. Um, so I, so I personally identify as cuck because I find myself right there on the spectrum. Um, the, it, it seems like the, the stags tend to be very, um, either they, they really don't want anybody to associate the negative stigma or they want everybody to know that, Hey, they still have sex with their woman. Um, they still like have manly fetishes, but, um, but they still like will go down and clean up their woman after cream pie and stuff. So there's not really an exact, you know, science to what it is. Um, but there, there seems to be that they don't want the, the humiliation side of it to be too important. Um, and then me as a cuck, I, it's not really that I care about the humiliation as much, but I'm very invested in my partner and my woman and seeing her, it's not for me to get off and me to see her with the guys that I want. I want to see her 
explode, you know, out of her own sexual, you know, glory that she can uh, come out of it. Not the best words there, but <laughs> I, I want to see her <laughs> really embrace her sexuality to the fullest extent. Um, and, and, and that power really is what turns me on, not me, you know, seeing it or, or getting off in a different way. Um, that level of compersion, I believe is the word that I've heard recently that I love, mm -hmm. um, really getting <laughs> off on her pleasure is where I find myself. Um, and I don't mind any of the humiliation stuff. I still enjoy, um, you know, having sex with my partner and stuff. So that I'm, I'm, I'm totally okay with going either way on the spectrum in the heat of the moment or with the, you know, um, you know, if, depending on what my partner's wishes are at that time and place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, personally, I find myself right, right in that sweet spot there where I really want her to, uh, uh, I want her to have um, her best sexual awakening that she can. Yeah. So what I really want to ask is, this is what I've been dying to ask a guy. So <laughs> do you think that stags feel cuck angst or do they not feel cuck angst at all? Is it literally just compersion? They enjoy watching their women. They don't feel any of that cucky kind of angst that I happen to really love in a relationship. But what do, <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Do you think I, I'm trying to wrap my head around this this because this goes back to the whole thing that where you just said, um, all stags are cucks. And I'm like, this is such a controversial <laughs> statement. I made that statement on Twitter one time and holy shit, that was a firestorm. <laughs> Uh, well, I will take that firestorm. I um, for, and this is just my anecdotal experience. So, if a whole bunch of stags want to, you know, email me or, or message me on Twitter and tell me that this isn't the case, go ahead. But from the from the uh, the men that I've talked to that identify as stags, um, they definitely have cook angst. They they love it. They get off on it. They uh, many of them like to go down on their wives after for the cleanup and everything. Which, by the way, your episode on cleanup was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> very very great episode. Um, uh, so the, uh, but yeah, uh, I've noticed a lot of men that are in the military actually, um, use the term stag instead. And I think the main reason that you find people using the term stag, they don't truly differentiate any of their behavior too much. Um, other than, I, I don't think I've ever met a stag that doesn't, um, have penetrative sex with, uh, his woman. Um, but other than that, it seems like it's very much that they just don't want the, the negative label of the cuck there, but they definitely, when I talk to them about what they feel like with their partners and and the feelings that they have it's a hundred percent cuck angst huh. um so that that's what we can say that yeah all all these stags are definitely cucks like we're all going through the same thing and we're all brothers here <laughs> very interesting so would you say then that the difference between a cuck and a stag if you know they're very very similar there's a whole lot of overlap but mm -hmm. i guess the the only main kind of differences that i can C would be um, sexual denial being one of them and o <laughs> overt humiliation. So not necessarily like I'm not saying teasing is a differentiating factor, um, but overt humiliation would be. So is it all about or is it all about power and control of the woman? Like does a stag still feel like he owns his woman and he allows her to be shared or it, it, is that it? Whereas a cuck is like, no, she does whatever she wants. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's a great question too because there's such an overlap be, uh, between these two. Uh, because I've talked to a lot of stags that feel both ways on this, but some of them love their uh, girl going out and doing whatever she wants and coming home to them. Um, other ones, uh, uh, they pick who their woman is going to be with, and they like that power there. Um, but I've also met cucks that. Uh, people that identify as cuckold on um, that feel the same way there. Um, so I think it really is just about that, that level of humiliation um, that they're kind of an, uh, uh, afraid to embrace, which I've talked to a few of them and it seems like behind closed doors, they do kind of embrace it um, <laughs> sometimes, but there's also some people that identify as cuckold that don't really embrace. So yeah. I think there's a big Venn diagram that overlaps here. Um, and yeah, I think that the, uh, uh, I, I think that all those differences are there generalized but you can meet somebody who doesn't fall exactly into one of those um which is one of the great things about cuckolding which is why i use that general term for you know all these different things um because in a cuckolding relationship there's so much variety and there's so much level for uniqueness that i think the most important thing in all these things um is to when you're with your partner to communicate and talk about what both of you guys like and figuring out 
what both of you are into. Um, because maybe for the right girl, you will want to go down, you know, the sissy beta route. And maybe that's something that turns both of you on. Maybe you don't like that at all. And you would always want to be with a girl that just wants more men in her life. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe, maybe you're somewhere in the middle of that. So I, I think that the, everybody's going to be an individual. Um, but I think that those, I, I think that those things are bimodal. They overlap a lot of the times, but there's definitely people in the middle that don't, <laughs> don't really fit in, in one or the other if you just classify it like that. So I read a story recently, I think it was, uh, I don't know, last week or something like that on a Discord ser server, where a guy who identifies as a stag was um, telling a story about how he is now feeling like he's transitioning into being a what he believes is a cuckold. And what was the tipping point for that was that he had always been the one to arrange his wife's encounters with bulls. Like he was the one who planned everything. He was always the one kind of orchestrating everything, calling all the shots, making the decisions. She just kind of went along with it and had fun. And they both liked it that way. But there came one instance where she took the reins and he, he, he stepped back and it was a, a weird feeling for him. He had to like adjust to it. Um, but, but what ended up happening was she told him to leave the room <laughs> <laughs> and and he hated it, but loved it at that moment. And at that, and after that entire situation where he is so used to being in control and all of a sudden his wife took that control and was like, no, you're going to wait out there and I'll tell you all about it afterwards. And that cuck angst that he felt because of that. <laughs> I just, when I read this story, I was like, yes, now I can understand what would flip the switch for a guy used to being it quote unquote, a stag. And now being in more of that cuck role. So I just wanted to bring that story up because I found it completely fascinating. Um, the power dynamic in the versus the stag and the cuckold, I think are really what um, separates the two. I think in the stag relationship, you have that power dynamic. I'm the man and I'm controlling things. Um, even if I'm going down on her after she took, you know, a cock twice my size all the way deep and I'm eating out her cream pie, even if that's the case, I'm still controlling it in the driver's seat. Um, and I think that when you embrace the cuckold side, you relinquish that to, no, she's getting off how she wants and I get to be there for the ride. Um, so really letting her be in the driver's seat is very empowering, like that um, guy just said, and that it develops that cuck angst. But I think that almost all stags have that in the background anyway, like this gentleman did. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it, it opened it up for him to go there. Um, but I think that what, what we probably don't see from the story is there was probably so much communication with her partner over doing this multiple times, over him picking out on the right person and them having discussions about this and having late night talks and her teasing him and going back and forth, that that probably built up the communication where once she wanted to experiment in this way, it was okay to do that. And then if he didn't like it or something, I'm sure he could have talked to her after that and said he didn't. But the yeah. fact that they did help them open up a new you know, level because of their communication. And that's the beautiful thing about cuckold relationships is, like you said, it's a huge spectrum and it varies a lot. There's overlap everywhere. It's really hard to really figure out where you land on that spectrum because within cuckolding relationships, they grow, they evolve, and you might start on one side of the spectrum and find yourself in an entirely different place later on. Mm -hmm. Each couple is completely unique. Um, but yeah, communication is absolutely key. Trying to figure out what your partner really wants and is afraid to ask for is key as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think that that's something I tried to harp on in the, uh, uh, in the post that I did there um, about how these aren't but you should never classify yourself as I am this forever and always. Just right now, this is how you feel, you know, in this position. I'm a stag, I'm a cuck, whatever. But if you want to change that, if you want to, you know, do something a little bit more, you know, risque and, and go a little bit farther on the spectrum, go right ahead. Mm -hmm. If, you know, if you want to come out that and you want to, you know, just be on the other side and uh, kind of share more intimacy with your partner instead and not have the other stuff, you can do that. If you want to share intimacy um, without PIV, without penis and vagina, you know, other ways to, um, you know, have. Uh, uh, sex with your wife um, or girlfriend or, you know, um, having those other mechanisms and other sexual activities you can do instead of just limiting yourself to that really opens you up. Um, and I think also doing the same thing with the power uh, dynamics. 
You don't always have to be the one on top. If that's the only way you're comfortable, okay. But, you know, it, it can be very, even if it's uncomfortable sometimes, it can be very empowering and very unique and very visceral to just accept the the, the inverse of what you're used to. Um, and for your partner, for all the guys out there, it also probably feels really great for your partner to have that power of control and to be able to, you know, for her to be able to, to take the reins and do that. Um, especially if she says that she's not, not, not especially if, but um, if sometimes she says that she's, you know, might be a little bit timid about it and a little bit nervous about doing this, it might be because she's really enticed by the idea, but scared about what it might do. So I think that that communication and just making sure that, um, that making sure that both that both people the the cuckold and the cuckoldress that they both want each other to um to to go to new heights sexually that's the key and as long as they both have that open communication and that's the goal the whole time um then i think that uh that's how you can resolve all those issues and jump around the spectrum where wherever you feel comfortable that's where the magic of this kind of relationship happens it's transformative <laughs> for both people involved but that enormous growth that you both go through connects you on a whole different level that I think you you wouldn't normally ever experience otherwise. Communication, trust, love, all of those things. Anyway, I uh, agree. I've gone on and on and on about that shit before. <laughs> <laughs> all the great mushy stuff. Well, that's honestly, though, that is, um, that, that, that is one of the things what you asked me before about what inspired me to write. Um, all that mushy stuff, all that love stuff, that that you can have this great loving relationship and it doesn't just have to be what you see in this porn of, you know, a girl using a man as an ashtray and like locking the door behind him. That, no, that's not what it is at all. Um, that really opening up to, to what it can be in real life instead of just the, you know, extremes you see on porn, um, that definitely completely changed the way that I thought about it. And that's helped my own transformative growth. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think that's just so important. Okay, so that was my conversation with my friend who goes by The Confident Cuck. You can check out his blog, which is awesome, at confidentcuck.wordpress.com. Or you can reach out to him on Twitter. He goes by the handle at Confident Cuck. That's all for today's episode. Please make sure you check out my Patreon page. The link is in the show notes. And I'm going to have a lot of contests and giveaways and promotions coming up, including the grand prize draw on February 2nd. So anyone who signs up for my Patreon between January 2nd and February 2nd is going to receive a handwritten postcard uh, mailed to them as a thank you for helping support the podcast and allowing me to continue to do this on a full-time basis. So thank you. Please visit www.venuscuckoldress.com to check out the blog and subscribe to the podcast, as well as check me out on Twitter. I'm at, at cuckoldressv, and I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can check out those links in the show notes for today. So thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.